Okay guys, so we are at the final chapter for semester 3 of STPM where we're going to learn about polymer. Okay, so let's have a look at the content of this chapter's lesson. So in this chapter, we're going to have a look at what is actually a condensation polymerizations, additional polymerizations, classifications of polymers, and also uses of polymer in our daily life. Okay, so the table in below here shows the past question analysis. So hopefully you know that uh, this is also a rather important chapter for STPM chemistry. So what is actually a polymer? So a polymer is intervened from the words uh, poly, for, which is in Greek means many, mer means part. So it is a large molecule, or we say that a small macro molecule composed of many repeating units called as monomer. So polymer can be generally categorized into two categories, a natural polymer and a synthetic polymer. So a natural polymer is polymer that is formed naturally by living things such as animals and also plants. Whereas synthetic polymer is a polymer that chemical synthesized by a human being. So uh, to synthesize a synthetic polymer, it can be done via two types of polymerization, which is additional polymerization and also condensation polymerizations. Okay, so uh, this is an example of the polymer formed via additional polymerizations. Well, this is an example of polymer that is formed via condensation polymerizations. So let's have a look at the comparisons of the uh, polymerizations formed by additional and condensation polymerizations. So an additional, an additional polymerization is defined as a polymerization that takes place by joining the pi bonds in C double bond C to form a long chain of a sigma bond between the monomer. Whereas a condensation polymerization is two different functioning groups at each of each, uh, at end of each monomer react and join using covalent bond and at the same time remove a small molecule. So examples of additional polymerizations are from polyethylene. You can also see from just now example polyvinyl chloride. Another examples of the uh, condensation polymerization is nylon 66, where you actually comes from the reaction between diamine and dioic acid. Empirical formula of the additional polymer is expected to be the same of the formula for a repeating unit. However, for condensation polymerizations, the empirical formula of the monomer is different from its repeating unit. So, for additional reaction to take additional polymerizations to take place, a molecule or a monomer must have a C double bond C. Whereas for condensation polymerization to take place, a uh, monomer must contain two different functioning groups at each edge of the monomer. So let's have a look at condensation polymerization. So as seen in previous chapter, the term condensation is used to express any reaction between two organic molecules accompanied by a small loss of what, uh, molecules such as water, carbon dioxide or methanol. So for two monomers to undergo condensation reaction, it must have two different functioning groups that are able to react with us to form a small molecule. Therefore, between these monomers, they must have different group of functioning group in order to react. So generally, we categorize them into two groups. So compound in group A will usually react with compound in group B to form a compound with different functioning group. So for carboxylic acid, water is formed as a side product. And for acid chloride, hydrogen chloride is formed as a side product. So it also indicates functioning group at the same category cannot be polymerized. So this is the groups that I'm talking about where uh, if you have a group A which is mainly made of carboxyl group and also acyl group. So when carboxyl group react with this um, hydroxyl group, so you form a new uh, functioning group which is known as ester so eventually we form what we so called as a polyester or you can also make use of acyl chloride react with alcohol to give the same ester if you want to form a polyamide all you have to do is react either with a carboxyl group with amine as a functioning group in order to form amide in the new functioning group or you can a better one is by using acyl chloride react with amine to form an uh, amide functioning group. So as described just now, we say is that a uh, compound from the same group cannot be reacted. Therefore, there is no possible reaction between carboxylic acid and also acyl chloride. Or there is no possible reaction between diamine and di di uh, dihydride. So this is the general uh, tables that can help you to understand what is about all these uh, polymerizations take place. So for condensation polymerization, the most common polymers are polyamide and also polyester. 
So examples of each polymers are namely nylon 66 and also polyethylene terephthalate or PET. So let's have a look starting from a polyamide. So a polyamide is formed when an amine reacts with acyl chloride. So if two monomers each contain two different functioning groups, either a dioic acid and diamine, or if you react with diacyl chloride and diamine, you therefore form polyamide. So the general equation for the reactions in here are given below. So if you react dioic acid with diamine, eventually you form polyamide. And you form a uh, diacyl chloride with diamine to form also polyamide. So in here, there are differences is on the side product that is formed. So if you use carboxylic acid, you form water as a side product. If you use uh, acyl chloride, you form hydrogen chloride as a side product. So nylon is the most common name for the polyamide. So polyamides are made generally from the reaction of diacid and diamine. So the most common polyamide is called as the nylon 66 because it makes of six carbon of diacid and six carbon of the amine. So a hexane diacid is mixed with hexane 16 diamine. A proton transfer reaction gives a white solid salt called as nylon salt. So when nylon salt is heated at 250 degrees Celsius, water is driven off as gas and molten nylon result. So molten nylon is cast into a solid shape or extruded through a spinneret to produce fiber. So this is the general equation for how nylon 66 is formed when you react with hexane dioic acid and also hexane 16 diamine. So you form a nylon 66 and water as a side product. So these are the reaction scheme of how nylon 66 can be produced starting from phenol and dichloroethane. When you're starting from phenol, if you react with a reducing reagent such as hydrogen and nickel under high temperature, high pressure, so the hydrogenations take place inside the aromatic ring to form a cyclohexanol. So followed by using a strong oxidizing agent such as HNO3 to cause the carbon cleavage and form two dioic acid. So this dioic acid is actually one of the compo main components inside this polyamide. So this dioic acid, of, of part of the dioic acid is then reacted with PCl5 to form acyclorite, react with NH3 to form diamide, which is then reduced to form diamine. So the reaction between dicarboxylic acid and diamine will give this nylon 66. Another way of how the synthesis is through 1,4-dichlorobutane, uh, where in 1,4-dichlorobutane, if you react with ethanolic potassium cyanide under reflux, so you form a dinitrile. So this dinitrile can then be formed either a carboxylic acid or amine. So if you use uh, acidic hydrolysis of H2O+, to form a dioic acid. And if you use a reducing agent, LiLH4 followed by H2O+, you form diamine. So this diacid will react with diamine to form a new compound of nylon 66. Some of the properties of the nylon include the following. So nylon is a type of fiber with remarkable strength and durability. It can be melted and extruded into a strong continuous fiber, yet it does not rot. Thread spans from continuous nylon fiber is so much stronger than natural material because and it can make them to become thinner. So with this application, so nylon is suitable to be used as uh, ropes, sheer fabric, and near invisible woman stocking. So here are some examples of the picture. So this is the nylon rope, okay, and which is used to tie the yaksa, okay, and uh, we can also use to make the woman stockings, uh, woman stocking by using nylon. Huh? Okay, so this is for polyamide. Then we have a look at polyester. So as described earlier, an ester is formed when di a carboxylic acid or acyl chloride react with alcohol. So therefore, a polyester may be formed when direct acid react with diol or diacyl chloride react with diol. So in industry, alcohol is replaced by using simple diester, where you have direct acid react with diol to form that polyester, or you use diacyl chloride or diol to form polyester. The most common polyester is dacron where the polymer of terephthalic acid with ethylene. So uh, Dacron has a, a chemical name called as polyethylene terephthalic. Okay, terephthalic.
However, a better product is obtained using transaceration, where you use a diester to form also a, this uh, polyester. Okay, so these are the examples of equations. Uh. Okay, so Tecron fiber is used to make fabric and tire cord. So the Mylar film is also used to make magnetic tape recording video. So Mylar film is strong, flexible, and resistant to ultraviolet, ultraviolet degradation. So aluminized Mylar was supposed to make the echo satellite huge balloon that were put into orbit around the Earth as giant reflector in the 1960s. So polyethylene terephthalate is also blow molded to make plastic soft drink water that are sold by billions every year. So these are a few applications of the, uh, this uh, what? polyester, okay, and then also bottle, uh, okay. Okay, so with that, I finish the first part of the polymer, condensation polymerization, so see you in the next video. Thank you.